Prototyping is one of the most important stages in the design process, yet it's one of those that are often neglected. In this video, I'll give you a full prototyping guide explaining what it is, why it is important, the tools you can use, and I'll walk you through a quick tutorial for you to start prototyping today. If you're new here, you know what to do to tag along. But without further ado, let's get to the content. Let's start with the basics, the definition. Simply put, prototyping is creating a working model of your design before it's built. By prototyping, you're able to take the screens you've designed and allow users to interact with them. So they will click through screens and experience as they would the live product. In the design process, prototypes allow us to simulate real user interactions, which help us test ideas, identify flaws, and refine the user experience before writing a single line of code. By now, you may be able to tell the importance of prototyping already. But in case you're still wondering, here it goes. Prototyping allows you to validate your design ideas, test user flows, and spot any usability issues early on. In my opinion, prototyping is one of the most critical phases in the design process, and it's one that you should not skip. When you go straight from wireframing or mockups to development without testing the interaction, you risk investing time and resources into something that may not work as expected or that it may not be as intuitive for the final user as you thought. And contrary to what many people and companies may think, prototyping doesn't have to take too much time and be expensive. Actually, you can use the tools that you already use to design the interfaces like Figma to prototype efficiently. Speaking of tools, there are many options out there that you can use, from simple to more advanced. Here are a few popular ones. The first one is Figma, my personal favorite. It's the tool most companies are using these days, it's free to get started, and it integrates both design and prototyping into one platform, making it not only easier for you because you're already familiar with the tool that you're using, but also makes this process much faster. The second one is Adobe XD, another great option with a smooth interface and strong prototyping abilities. The third one is Envision, perfect for more advanced prototyping. Know that if you use Sketch to design, you can use Envision as a partner for a more interactive prototype. So you export your interfaces from Sketch and then you import them and prototype them on Envision. All right, now let me walk you through a quick tutorial on how to prototype on Figma, made out of only five steps. Step one, set up your frames. Start by creating the key screens or frames of your designs. These will act as your basic screens for the prototype. The ones that I'm showing you here, they're high fidelity mockups, but even with drawings, you can import them into Figma and still prototype. Once you already have your screens, then we're gonna go to step number two, linking interactions. Once the frames are in place, switch to the prototype mode on Figma. You can click the prototype tab in the right bar or use the shortcut Shift E. Start by selecting the elements you want to have an interaction like buttons, for example, and dragging the arrows to the next frame to indicate the user flow. So once the user clicks this button here, then they're going to be taken to the next screen. When you are on prototype mode, you're able to see these blue arrows that go from one screen to the other representing that they are connected. And a little fun fact here, these connections are often called noodles because once you're done, you're probably is going to look like a very messy noodle plate. Step number three, define the interactions. Now for each link, you can define how the user is going to interact with it. Will it be a click? a hoover, a swipe, or maybe it's going to happen after a delay. You can customize the transitions such as instant and smart animate to make it feel more dynamic and closer to what you want the experience to be on production. Usually I use instant or smart animate, but truly try things out and see what really feels closer to the ones you're trying to replicate. I must say that one of the AI features Figma announced during config I was most excited about was letting Figma prototype things for you. Because as you can see, this process can be very manual. One thing that you can do as well is to prototype components. So you're only going to set up that once and all the instances are going to have that interaction that you want. Step number four, testing the prototype. After linking everything, click present 
and make sure to test things out. You can interact with the design like a real user would, navigating from one screen to the other. This is the moment for you to spot any issues with a prototype and to adjust. In case you're prototyping the interfaces of a mobile app, my tip is for you to download the Figma app and test it on your phone so you can have the full experience. And step number five, share the prototype to collect feedback. Once you're happy with the prototype, Figma makes it easy for you to share the prototype link with anyone you want. So members of the team, stakeholders, beta users, this way they can test the prototype and provide any feedback to you before anything is coded. And that's it, a quick guide to prototyping with Figma. And remember, prototyping shouldn't be this extra optional step. It saves the team time, resources, and it helps you build a better product. If you found this video helpful, Something tells me you're going to enjoy my comprehensive wireframe guide, where I also explain what it is, the importance of it, and how to do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy designing!